Hi everyone. I'm Susan with Pigtail Quilting and Stitching. Welcome to my channel. I know on the last video I said it was me part two of how I organize my scraps and that is coming. I have filmed parts of it but it's just not complete and I want to kind of show you the whole thing. So that's on hold but the reason it's on hold is because I am going to my spring quilting retreat tomorrow. It's the same one I did uh, in the fall, only this one is in March, and it's three days, just a day retreat. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I got everything together, and I'm not going to do cross-stitch this time. I'm going to do work on a new grandmother's flower garden. So I kind of want to show you my setup and the new way, the, new, the fabric I'm going to use, and the background, and kind of just uh, show you how uh, I, my plans are, show you what my plans are. And then also I have been working on some pocket prayer quilts and I kind of got those all finished. So I wanted to kind of share those with you. And then I wanted to update you on the progress of my Quilt of Valor. I got the top done and got it ready to go to my quilter and even um, have prepared the binding. So I kind of want to share that with you too. But the Organizing my scraps is coming, so but I just have this little detour once again, so just kind of bear with me. So let's get started. my Quilt of Valor quilt top. I just finished it and I just wanted to show it to you. The last time in the last video I talked about uh, our group of my quilter friends were all going to make one and I talked about my pattern but I hadn't received my pattern. I did show my, my fabrics. So here is my quilt. It is called Stars and Stripes and the pattern was from Missouri Star Quilting. I'll come over here and I'll show you the pattern. And it was a really great pattern um, to sew. There's also a tutor tutorial about how to cut the stars that really uh, was really worked well. And so this is the pattern. And my backing fabric is, is a wide back and it's the cream behind there. And I'm gonna use the blue for my binding. So it's just uh, getting ready. I will get it ready with my batting and you know press my back and uh, get it ready to my, my long arm quilter. And the next time you'll see it is after I get it back and I'll show you after it's quilted. So I'm just kind of thinking about what I want on uh, for the quilting. But it was really a, a nice quilt fun quilt to make. I really enjoyed it and the blocks went together really nicely. So this quilt is 64 by 80 and that fits the requirements, the guidelines for Quilts of Valor and they have a website. So the quilts that we're making will all go to a veterans home here uh, not too far from in another town from where I live. So I'm getting ready for my springtime hand stitching retreat. I did a little video last fall when I went to uh, my last re uh, hand stitching retreat and I showed you how I did my setup. And at that time I was doing cross stitch. This time I'm gonna do a little, uh, something a little different. I'm gonna start a different project and I wanna kinda share with you what that is and how I'm going to set up when I get there. So we'll get a little closer. And this hand stitching retreat is kind of nice because you can kind of work on what you want. There's a lot of wool, beautiful wool projects, a lot of beautiful embroidery, and uh, cross stitch. 
And so what I thought I was going to do is work on a new grandmother's flower garden. And I've made a couple of different ones of these. Um, my sister taught me how to do this long ago, and she's made uh, a lot of these quilts, both, both all hand done, and then the flowers, and then put on a background uh, like that one I have um, on the chair. And I've showed uh, these quilts in previous videos, but I thought I'd get them out because I can kind of explain better what I'm gonna do on this project. So I'll get a little closer and show you what I have. I have my little pressing, um, I think it's a June Taylor, and it's one of the bigger ones. And I cut the handle off, it's a little fabric handle. And I use some of Lori Holt's a heavier fabric that she can um, do covering things for. I think she has that like, covered her ironing boards or any pads and so I just cut uh, the fabric to fit and use duct tape on the bottom and then I have a gripper so it stays put and I will um, show you how that's going to work. So I have my little iron, I got that for Christmas and I have my Ot light. I don't need a magnifier so I'm just going to take a light and I have a little, little plastic bowl for my threads so I can gather those up and I have a little, uh, you know, a pressing uh, clapper and my threads, a little best pressed, of course, my phone stand that my sister made so I can keep my phone handy. Over here, I have some things where I'm gonna need to sew. I've got my pins my, and uh, some of my needles that are in there. I use, um, I think size eight mill nurse is what I'm gonna be using because it helps with this, this thread and I have the thread and all the colors of the fabrics. I've already got that packed. And then I also have a little cutting mat here because I'm going to put these flowers, you can see I'm only gonna do one row of flowers. Uh, it's gonna go a little bit faster and then I just think it'll be kind of a cute smaller quilt. So I had this jelly roll. In fact, I have another jelly roll and then I'll use the other jelly roll for sashing. Don't know exactly how I'll put it together, but um, I'll kind of keep you posted on how it goes. So I've made one up and then I will kind of, um, it's not real straight on there, but I just, I just set it on. Um, applique that to the background, kind of like I did in this quilt with the bigger uh, grandmother's flower garden that was made out of like Aunt Grace's 1930s. And then just uh, machine quilted by my quilter. But I'm going, I've already cut out my little flowers so I can get started right away. But I also have several of these cut out. And then I've done some practice ones. And those will all be um, attached to, these are 10 inch uh, layer cakes and they're Lori Holtz bead backgrounds that I've already had. And so I thought this is a perfect time to use it. I can use them all scrappy and they're all gonna be different. And I'm going to cut, when I attach this, I will trim these squares up, maybe seven and a half. I haven't decided yet. I just know they're not gonna be 10, that's a little big. And then there is an, my second jelly roll. I've had these jelly rolls for a while. You've probably seen them in my, my previous videos. So I'm kind of excited to, to use them. So I'll use this one for sashing and whatever. I'll probably have lots left over. And I'm just starting to make the flowers. And I'm going to try something different. I got this uh, little collapsible uh, container on wheels, the gray, and I got it at Joann's and they had a 50% off and I thought I'm going to try it so I can put some of my things in and then just carry it in or wheel it in. And then also I have this little container I just got Hobby Lobby and it's going to have my sewing tools in it and it fits on the top and then all the other things will fit on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you two to get a little closer of this quilt. This is, I've made three of these. This one has red centers. And then I've showed you the two others that have yellow centers that were my mother's flowers that I made into two quilts. And I'll swing over here and show you the first one I made. And this one is all hand pieced. It's machine quilted, but it's all hand pieced. And I did use um, 
a pattern that my sister kind of put together for me so I could learn. And then I just did a, a small one with I think 25 flowers. And this one was all with um, Aunt Grace reproductions too. So this is made quite a long time ago. But this is just a fun way to do the work on a hand project. And what's um, great about it is this pattern, these little squares, I'll kind of show you that. I have one middle and then six little octagons, but they come from a stamp and it's called by Kate. And um, I think she does have a website. It used to be um, just called and ordered, but it's a stamp and you can stamp a two and a half inch uh, strip and then cut, there's a line to cut out and then you have your quarter inch line. So it's um, very nice to kind of learn on and do. So I'll kind of show you those. It's a stamp pad for fabric and a stamp. And I know now they have a newer, the newer stamps that are like the, the more up to date with a clear backing. And mine, mine is wood because it, it's a wood, a regular wood stamp, but it's from quite a long time ago. But I will show you uh, how I taped the back of my ironing mat. And this way my ironing mat stays clean and I can change my fabric out. And that makes it kind of fun too. So let's kind of keep showing how this is. I'm kind of excited. It's uh, going to be tomorrow. So I'll be packing this up and getting it ready and setting it right to go in my car tomorrow morning. This is a three day retreat, just a day. It goes from nine until around four or as late as you like, like five. And it's uh, three days, Thursday, Friday, and uh, Saturday. So I flipped my ironing uh, pad around and I can show you how easy it was just to cover. And I just got some duct tape and cut the fabric just like I was gonna wrap a little present and wrapped it around and then I can take it off very easily. It doesn't harm the, the cutting mat. And um, like I said, it was a June Taylor. It's one of the bigger ones. It's not ones with a cutting mat on the back. It's just one of this, those rectangles and I think it has a little, uh, like a little canvas handle and I just trimmed that off and then also I just went to the kitchen section at Target or you can get this anywhere and it's shelf liner or drawer liner and I bought the wide one and then I came home and measured and then I cut it to go underneath and it really does keep it stable when you're ironing or in then I can also stick my little um, cutting mat on top of my ironing board if I want to if I want to cut some of these squares and try to see what size I want to use. So anyway, just thought I'd share with you that. And also I do take a uh, a lint brush with me and I just got a new brand that I'm trying. I got it oops at Target. But it is I usually just get the regular ones, but I'm trying this one and it's a, a, it says for pets but boy, does it get threads off of your clothes or anything. I've always had a hard time with my other one getting after I've sewed all day or I, it, it might, you know, in my, in my sweatshirts or whatever, and it just clings. But boy, this really takes it off. So I was kind of excited. So I'm going to bring one of these with me to the retreat. And now I'll show you the stamps that I use uh, for the grandmother's flower garden. So I want to show you the stamp that I use. Um, to get the little hexagons and I got this this is uh, quite I've had this quite a long time I think over 20 years but I keep ordering new uh, stamp pads and I always keep stamp pads and I always keep them in uh, a baggie to keep them fresh and they, they do last a very long time but you can see I've stamped um, two octagons and then I'll just we'll cut those out there's a cutting line and then the other line is the quarter inch line and that's what you match them up with and then my stamp is, is got wood on it, but they don't make those anymore. But the new ones, and I haven't unpackaged these because I, I, I did order the new ones. They have the acrylic block that you can put your stamp on. And then also there is the uh, octagon one that is the size that I have, that I've, I've done here. 
And she does have a website now. It's by Kate. Oh, I guess she has uh, it's www.bykate.com email. And she has uh, an email that you can email and an order. And I ordered and it was, it was great. I got my order. And so now you can reorder and get your stamp pads. Um, whatever, but I really haven't because had to order very many over the years because I keep them in plastic, keep put a rubber band around it and keep them in plastic so they stay fresh. So here are some more of my little sets that I've got all ready to go. Use my little one, my wonder clips. I'm taking a little bit of paper towels and some wet ones. And then also my husband, he um, cut me some of this chipboard that he had. And it's kind of like um, the paper, it's kind of like when I showed you about my boards, only this is just uh, chipboard. And that way I can protect the surface of where I am uh, stamping. So it's kind of nice. You can have it uh, a nice area and not have to worry about getting anything on it. So, and I just will have this all packed up in this, this little bin I got. I got my threads all matched to the, the colors that of the fabrics and then I've got a, it's got another one on this side that I can use so I think it'll be very easy to take all my things and keep it pretty compact. We've got a very snowy March and so it's going to be nice to kind of be able to stay in one place and and um, do some hand sewing and then also be able to leave your things there overnight and come back and it's ready to go the next morning for the day. So. Kind of excited. I think there's around 17 or 18 that have signed up. So this should be really, really fun. Looking forward to it. So anyway, I'll just go back over here, kind of show you again my quilt. This one quilt, this was all, all hand pieced, but it, it was machine quilted. And uh, this one is just going to be a very smaller version. And I think it'll be kind of cute, look more like a little uh, whimsical. And it'll be uh, sashed and kind of scrappy. So I'm just gonna kind of play around with it and kind of see where it kind of takes me. But I'm kind of excited to use some of the things I've had and I've been really excited to want to use something for these B. Lori background layer cake. So um, just looking forward to having a new project uh, to work on. So, I also want to share with you what I've been working on. I have been making uh, pocket prayer quilts, and I don't know if all of you know what they are, but they're just a little, little quilt, kind of a little quilt, and inside them there is a cross. Everyone has a cross, and on the back is a prayer, and it just says this is a pocket prayer quilt um, for you. And you can write a little prayer yourself. I happen to be doing these for my son, who's a pastor, and he is preparing some Easter boxes to be mailed out to people in his congregation, and these are gonna be a part of it. There's a little envelope that can go in, but I got, uh, Shabby Fabrics has a tutorial, although I did not follow their tutorial exactly. I kind of didn't turn my quilt little patch uh, inside out. I just sewed on it and then pinked the edges, and I'll give you a little look out. So I made these out of charm packs, and you just cut one and a half inch strips and then you sew your two strips together and cut and then you take another charm square cut it in half twice and you get four backs so these uh, little quilts just get you get four out of um, two charms and you get four backs out of one charm and then I used some warm and natural uh, batting that I had that I used for my um, design boards that I showed in a video. And then you put just a little tiny cross and I put them in each corner and uh, put the batting together and the top together and stitched around the edges. And then I pinked them. And then I pinked the edges with my rotary cutter that I have a, a pinking blade in a quarter of an inch with my ruler. And then I took uh, embroidery floss 
and just use the six skeins, all six threads, and uh, kind of tack them down in the middle. And you can kind of see there's an impression of the little cross in this one. But I just really enjoyed making them. It was so fun to put the little, the little squares together. And I plan on making um, some more. I ordered, I did get these little packages of crosses that came in. This was what these were like. They came in both gold or, and uh, silver. And they were in the jewelry section at Michael's. And you can also order them online. Um, and they came, I think, 20 pieces in a package. But these were really fun to make. And so I just finished up this project and I'm gonna put these in a box and get these ready to go. So I just thought before I send them off, I'm going to um, show you what they are. And a little close, a little pin behind it is a, the little printout of the little pocket square qu quilt. So anyway, but I think there's, there's a lot of tutorials on these. Uh, like I said, I looked up shabby fabrics and they kind of had what they use and I kind of followed that only I just didn't turn them I I kind of left them edges and I put a little batting in mine and so you could keep them in your purse or wherever I just thought they're just a little just a little darling thing to have and to give to a friend or someone. I think I'm, I plan on making some more and um, I'm working on that in the future. So thank you for watching this video and for subscribing to my channel. And I'm going to be working on organizing those scraps and bringing that to you next time. So thank you for watching.